All right, guys. Thank you for joining for today. Uh, mock interview sessions for QA. And I want to introduce our hiring managers, uh, Josh and George Andros and Maria Kozlova. Both of them, they are hiring managers. And um, George is working as a director of quality engineering at Hinge Health. And Maria, uh, she is a QA automation manager at Mpulse Mobile. Am I right, guys? All right, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for joining. So whoever is the first time with us, uh, let me tell you uh, the format of our uh, mock interviews. So we have two uh, candidates, anonymous candidates. They, um, they're gonna be participating, obviously, uh, to be safe anonymously, but they are prepared for the first uh, questions, like tell us about yourself and tell us about your last project. And then uh, George and Maria, they will go with the follow-up questions as they regular do in their uh, screening, on their initial screening phone call or initial interview uh, process. And uh, in the end, uh, the most important and the most um, valuable would be that and George and Maria, uh, they will give a, a, a honest and a clear feedback, like what was what went well, what should be improved, and um, overall, like the uh, feedback. So usually you don't get this feedback if you got rejected during the interview. And, uh, and again, like this is educational. Uh, our project, we don't guarantee any jobs. We don't promise any, any jobs here. Uh, George and Maria, they volunteered to participate in, uh, they volunteered their time on, <laughs> on Saturday's morning, which is very valuable. We are very appreciated guys. And uh, let's get started. So we have, and yes, please, uh, you can send uh, questions in the chat. We have Q and A section. Uh, I will be monitoring the, the chat and questions, and uh, George Maria by the end will be able to answer those too. So if you have like very painful questions, like why I'm not getting through, please go ahead. Uh, we'll try to help as much as possible uh, today. Anyway, that was a. Uh, Long intro. <laughs> uh, let me move uh, candidate number one to, um, give me a second. Here we go. Uh, candidate number two, you just uh, hang on there. Uh, after candidate number one will move. I'll, I'll Hello, move. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm good, thank you, thank you. I'm really happy to be here and thank you uh, for your time. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> thank you for joining. Thank you for volunteering as well. I know it's uh, nervous even being in the real interview, but mock interview could be also, uh, we hope we're gonna be helpful. Um, please, uh, you can share your screen. Uh, so, awesome. We can see your resume and um, yeah. Candidate number one, please uh, tell us about yourself and uh, about your last uh, company project. Please go ahead. Sure, thank you. Yeah, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm candidate number one. I've been in, this, in the industry for more than seven years. Uh, I've been testing mobile web uh, API uh, for the last company that I work. I have a title of quality engineering lead. And most of my time I do mobile testing. I was lucky enough in my uh, path to uh, test applications that have impact on millions of people on a daily basis, which is great because you can really see uh, how your app and your work is impacting people. Uh, yeah. Uh, my last project that I'm working on right now, it's a uh, daily work. Um, project, what we're trying to accomplish with our project is to uh, get people to use our app every day and also reward with uh, reward them uh, a 
as soon as they do whatever they require to do, they need to perform some steps on our app. They can get some uh, bonus points, and after that, they can exchange those points to uh, some real prizes. Uh, yeah, uh, most of the time it's mobile testing. Also, I do some automation. I'm implementing automation of the new and existing features. I'm uh, also uh, doing uh, as data. I'm participating in as data apprenticeship program. We are uh, helping people to transition from. Uh, functional QA to uh, automation QA. I'm doing my part. Uh, the material that I'm introducing to new people, it's uh, what I, I know the best. I'm not <laughs> like, uh, I'm not good in all of it, but the part that I know the best, I definitely can teach you as that. Uh, yeah, and this is a small overview about me and the PLUS project. All right, uh, George, Maria, please go ahead. Who wanna go first? George, you wanna go first? Ladies first, I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, um, all right, thank you for uh, for introduction. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about what you did in your, what you're actually doing in your um, current company? What project are you working on? So it's mobile application, uh, but uh, how do you test it? What kind of testing you perform? in your current position? Uh, usually we do regression every two weeks. Also, I'm testing new features uh, every week, uh, whatever it's ready uh, for Android or iOS testing. Uh, ideally, it should go in parallel. The development of new features should go in parallel, but uh, usually Android is one release behind, meaning that we're releasing new features for iOS first. Uh, yeah, I'm doing uh, some, like since uh, we're pretty good at documentation, uh, I'm performing and trend testing Sometimes uh, before starting testing, I'm writing test cases. And according to the test cases, I can do boundary testing. I can do some negative testing also. I can, uh, and when it comes to test the whole feature, it's end-to-end -end testing. And also regression, as I mentioned. Is your team working in Agile? Um, if yes, how long is the sprint? And what is the process uh, in general in your team? Yeah, it's it's agile. We have releases every two weeks, and the sprint usually uh, it's about um, one one sprint in, in the quarter. Uh, George, do you have anything? Um, what's your biggest contribution to? the product's quality? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, when I joined the company, uh, I always had the feeling, first of all, I'm really passionate about mobile testing, about mobile devices. And for the last couple of years, I've been saying that the future is behind like mobile devices. And as we can see, iPads are becoming bigger and bigger, and you can almost do everything on uh, like uh, mobile devices, what you could, could it do like 10 years on, on your laptop? Right. And I'm really passionate about mobile devices. And I'm always looking ahead uh, of like what can I improve, what I can introduce uh, new to the team or to the company itself. And I was really surprised when I joined the company that they never tested on beta versions of Android and iOS. And, uh, and it's really important, kind of like you don't want to know that something is broken when a new uh, OS is coming up, right? And your app is broken because uh, what an iOS user does, uh, they update their uh, operating systems as soon as possible, right? Or even some people have their beta versions on their devices. And if they're using your app on a daily basis, you want to be sure that they can, nothing is going to be broken, right? And what I, I started saying that to the engineers that we need to start testing uh, beta OS versions before uh, they're coming out for the end users. And they kind of didn't hear me at the beginning. And I started pushing more and more in, in that direction. And uh, it was successful after a new OS version was released and our app crashed. And after they figured out, yes, I was right. And we need to start doing that. And right now we have multiple teams involved in beta testing of uh, upcoming OS versions for mo mobile devices, which is, uh, I'm really proud of it. And I, I really, I'm really happy that we can test that and we're performing that type of testing. 
uh, ahead. And to be honest, we were one of the uh, first companies to have uh, iOS 16 support this year that went to, uh, to the Apple Store, which is good. That's great. Um, I have a question. So you're working on, on the mobile testing. What is the difference between um, mobile application testing and web application testing? Can, I, I lost you for a second. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, sure. So what is the difference between mobile testing and web testing in applications? Uh, uh, web testing, okay. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, if we, like, I, I can ask you, uh, should I split between Android and iOS or should I say in general? If you want, uh, if, if Android, so, do you test differently iOS and Android? If yes, you can split them up if, uh, or you can speak in general if you're testing uh, pretty much the same for both iOS and Android. Okay, yeah, uh, check this out. At my current place right now, uh, we for iOS, we have native apps uh, and for Android too, but I have exposure testing both, right? Uh, web applications also on mobile devices. And le let me split because I can talk hours and hours about it <laughs> and you can stop me at any time. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's talk about Android web testing. First of all, uh, Android, it's really good because you can hook up uh, uh, an Android device to your computer and you actually can debug it through uh, from a developer tool. And you can see the uh, API responses, everything network responses, you can see that through Chrome on your laptop, right? Or your computer. And it's, which is really good, meaning debugging. Debugging is different on web and native applications. Uh, when it comes to iOS, I would use Safari uh, Developer 2 for the same purposes for iOS devices, right? And that's the big difference. When it comes to debugging native applications, you should have some, uh, you should use Xcode, for example, for iOS, which is not uh, used properly. I never used Xcode for uh, map testing on uh, iOS devices. Uh, and Android Studio uh, in order for debug um, uh, Android uh, native application. That's the big difference. Another thing is that uh, uh, screen re resolution, right? Web applications, they should be pretty responsive to be visible, to be properly uh, pages, to be displayed properly on different screen sizes, on web pages. Uh, like it can be uh, displayed one way and on native applications, it can be displayed another way. And usually it's pretty hard on native applications uh, to accommodate screen sizes. In, in the web technologies, it's a little bit easier. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, also supporting uh, web applications. Uh, sometimes uh, native applications, uh, they would not support older Android versions, right? And when it comes to web applications, you just open the browser. Is the browser still updating through Apple Store or Google Store? It's really easy to access those, those web applications. Um, what else? Memory. Yeah, I yeah, definitely. That's that's a really good point. Yes. Uh, to be honest, I, I think I didn't deal with the memory leaks for web applications, but when it comes uh, for memory leaks on, on native applications, that definitely can be an issue. And mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard sometimes to, to catch those issues, to understand that it's a, first of all, that it's a memory leak issue. Uh, sometimes automation can help, uh, front, like mobile automation or API automation can help that. Sometimes you need to have, uh, you need to fill out the uh, uh, storage of the device uh, to, in order to be able to catch those type of issues on, for native applications. That's definitely, yeah, thank you for the tip. That's definitely an issue. Um, do you test on real uh, devices or you use um, software where you test like virtually? Like uh, simulators, yeah. etc. Yeah, um, check this out. Uh, once again, since I have kind of exposure to automation also in my current place and also to functional testing, uh, I can I'm gonna try to give you like a like correct answer. First of all, for the automation, we use browser stack. Uh, who doesn't know browser stack? It's a device farm, and we are getting connected with our uh, automation ferret to browser stack, and we run our automation on on browser stack. Browser stack claims that all their devices are real, 
uh, I cannot <laughs> say that it's true or false, but at least uh, uh, for, sometimes we have conditions in our automation framework that uh, run uh, this test if the device is real. And those didn't fail, and those are not getting skipped during the uh, automation run or pipeline, meaning that probably it's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, when it comes to uh, functional testing, I have a good set of devices on my hands, and I definitely uh, test uh, with those devices. Uh, sometimes I can ask the project manager or stakeholders which devices are our goal, right? Because there's different, like Android, it's really complicated. It has different brands. It has different, like, custom Android versions, uh, even though it's kind of the same number, like Android 12, for example, but on Samsung and uh, OnePlus, it's going to look differently, right? Or Google Pixel. Uh, I'm checking what devices should I, chat, uh, should I uh, do functional testing. and uh, another thing, when I'm implementing automation, I'm using actually uh, Xcode and I'm building uh, an iOS simulator. And for Android, I use Android Studio. And uh, I run automation locally, first of all, on, on simulators. And after I merge my code, then I can run the pipeline. And the pipeline itself is going to run on browser stack devices. How do you identify what devices you need to test on? Like like you mentioned, Android, iOS, there's so many devices, so many screen resolutions, et cetera, but let, you cannot test on all of them, right? You need to yeah. choose um, how how you make this choice or how this choice is made by your company or your team. Uh, usually it's made by me and it's a really good question. And I can I definitely have a good answer for you. I hope so. Uh, first of all, uh, as I mentioned that we have a uh, million of users and I was lucky enough to test uh, applications that ha had impact on million of users on a daily basis. But usually what I do, even if I join to the company, uh, I need to have more information on devices, right? What I do, I can, uh, first of all, I can get in touch with a business analyst and uh, he or she, they're going to run a query and they're going to check what are the most used devices on our platform which is good. And they can give you, uh, definitely they can give you the device list, operating system, uh, whatever, what else. Uh, and uh, yeah, some additional information. And uh, by Googling, I can check, usually it's gonna have like the model device, right? And I can Google and then actually can check the other information like screen size and uh, like uh, the operating system and everything else. And this is what I usually do. I, I send a request to IT and they would send me that device. And this is what usually I do on a daily basis. I have the list, like I have like three or four Android devices, the most popular on our, uh, that are used on our platform, as same with iOS devices. So most popular one, what about the devices that are kind of old, but you need to still support them with your application? Uh, to be honest, there's requirements from uh, Apple and Google store, what Android versions they still support. I think we don't support Android, eight and lower meaning mm -hmm. like android 9 and probably it's also a business uh requirement for ios we don't support ios 13 because i was the one who was working on discontinuing ios 13 meaning like we have we're trying once again we're trying to be on top what's in uh in the industry right now and uh if somebody is using a older device we can definitely reach out to to the person and say we're sorry, but we're not supporting that device anymore, and we cannot help you. The only way to help you is just you upgrade your device. Mm, what about tablets? Say again? What about tablets? Ah, tablets, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, not many of our users are using tablets. Mm -hmm. And usually that's, an, oh, that's another good point uh, on your previous question tablets testing for web and native applications. <laughs> Sometimes it's really challenging because tablets are not widely supported on the apps. Uh, and it's not only about our app. If you're gonna install an Instagram app on, on an uh, iPad, you're gonna see a huge difference and UI is not uh, really, UI is not designed for iPads. And in our case, in the, my company currently, it's also the case. Even though we try to support that, it's not gonna have like huge UI, UI bugs, right? It's kind of like, Functionality wise is going to work 100%. When it comes mm -hmm. to UI, then there, there may be some like the button is misaligned or like the text is not centered in the button or something like that, but still the app is 100% functional. All right. Thank you. Uh, we covered a pretty big piece, Jersey. I'll um, 
I'll let you speak now. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I have a couple questions. What do you love about QA? Oh, that's a really good question. This is what I would ask uh, my candidates also, uh, because uh, during my career here uh, at my current place, I interviewed a lot of QA people. And, and uh, I can, uh, since we're honest here, right, I can give you two answers. One that you want to hear and another that like really what I like about QA. But I, I'm going to give you an honest one, right? First of all, I, I'm uh, really impressed how people with different backgrounds they're coming to the uh, IT world, right? And I'm not talking about only QA. Uh, I'm talking about developers, designers, like and like all, all, all type of uh, professions here in IT. And why I like QA? First of all, interaction with the people. And I think this is the most important, one of the most important uh, things that a good QA person should have. I'm seeing uh, a lot of people that don't want to take responsibility uh, to uh, on a task, right? or uh, to do something for QA team or for the company itself. And this is not about me. This is what I like about QA. First of all, interaction with other people. Secondary interaction with uh, people that have different background. Uh, and another, probably it's going to be like a cliche, but I'm passionate about quality, really. I'm using a lot of apps on a daily basis. And I'm really sad uh, since I was on the iOS 16 uh, on the better version. And I saw that a lot of my apps that I use on a daily basis they're just crashing, you know, like after the iOS 16 release, it took them like a few weeks and they fixed it. But anyway, I'm passionate about quality. And I like to find things that other people would probably not consider. Like I, I like reviewing design documents in order to write my test cases, right? Even though like uh, most of the people probably just would check requirements that are written in Jira. But this is what I like, I like to investigate. If I'm seeing a bug, I'm not just gonna open a bug report. I'm gonna try to find the uh, reason why it's failing. I'm gonna check whatever tools I have in my possession, like AWS, or I'm gonna run uh, uh, an API request uh, to Postman, right? I'm gonna use uh, a huge variable of uh, uh, tools that I have in my possession. And this is what I like about QA, like trying to find like the, the reason of the bug, not just like writing a bug report. Um, you mentioned in your current role, uh, you lead testing efforts and you also train new QA members. What would you say is uh, the most impactful way that you've made the whole QA team better? <laughs> I mentioned to Evgeny uh, that I'm I'm trying to stay positive with all the things that are going on in the world right now, and that I didn't add to my resume that I have a PhD in using GIFs uh, in Slack. Uh, usually in the morning, uh, I, I would uh, say uh, morning to everyone, right? And people are seeing those most funny GIFs and they're like getting cheered up like during the day. I'm trying to support them, check what they need for work right uh how they how can it help for them to accomplish their goals and this is what i would ask usually for QA candidates what are your goals with the company and not many people know what are the goals they just want to get a job and it's honest right it's true because people want to get the job but when i'm asking them like what are your goals with the company what are you trying to accomplish here let's assume you're hired what's going to be your goal for the next one or year or five years and then people it's really hard for them to say that. And as soon as a new person joins, like I'm taking the uh, leadership and I'm like, I'm trying to provide as much information as I can, uh, give them the support that, that they can. Sometimes just say, hi, how are you? And like, if you need help with something, just let me know. And it's really important for people. And a lot of people don't realize that, right? And this is what I'm trying to do on a daily basis. I'm trying to support my team members. And <laughs> sometimes when I'm speaking with my managers, and I'm telling them like someone further, they're like, oh, I should get better at that. Like, I need to do the same things as, as you do. I'm like, yeah, this is what I do. This is who uh, I am. So speaking of uh, goals and what you'd like to accomplish, what are you looking for in your next role? And what, what would you like to accomplish? To be honest, uh, first of all, probably um, I, I want to get better at automation. Uh, like really, I know some automation and I have enough knowledge to do my current work, right? Uh, I, I would like to work, start working on API automation. This is my like goal and I started taking a class right now. 
I'm taking API automation with Python. We have framework uh, for backend automation, and uh, I know how to test backend, right, with POS, but like as a functional QA. But my goal is first of all to learn automation, uh, backend automation. That's one thing. Secondary, I wanna uh, continue contributing uh, and helping other people to achieve their goals. And uh, yeah, learn new technology. And I wanna check what's in the like, what's the how, where the industry is moving on. You know, new technologies like the most popular programming language because you can see that right now we're using Ruby, and Ruby is not the most popular language right now. Like Java, JavaScript, and Python is the top three languages for automation. And uh, yeah, just this is my goals. New product, new technology. No, let's say that you accomplish that. You start working on new products, new technology. You learn new types of automation, and you apply what you've done before to something different. Um, what's next? That's a really good question. I would probably check probably would check with my manager or I, I'm not sure, like usually I have like kind of a type of mentor, if you can say so, like in a company. And usually I would uh, ask him like, how can I help my company to achieve their goals, right? Because uh, I came, for example, for next uh, role, I'm coming like, and I learned everything I implemented, like I improved like uh, automation framework. I automated as much as I can, right? And like, and I would ask my manager or manager of my manager, how can I be useful for the company? If they would say like, we need help with like, I don't know, become like troubleshooting, like, uh, or become like an iOS engineer or an Android engineer, go deeper uh, in some technology, like beside my daily duties. And I would definitely do that. And that would be, I think, like, I, and another thing that I never cared about titles. Uh, George, are you with us? I think we'll ask you. Yeah, I think this is a power outage. That yeah, but is. anyway, I, I'm still gonna answer. Yeah, uh, and I never cared about titles. The only thing that I care is how can I help the company that I'm working currently in to achieve their goals. And this is what's the most important thing. If I need to become a, a project manager for a short period of time to help my project manager, I'm not sure if I would be good at design, <laughs> but I can try. Right, but. Whatever I can, I can contribute and like my team and my companies benefit from what I can do extra, then I'm definitely gonna do that. And um, so right now you're working um, as a team leader. Um, do you like this part of your role as a leadership uh, or you want to move um, more to like engineering position? To be oh, honest, I like automation engineering. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, for now, I really like what I do, and once again, I I don't care about titles. I care how can how useful I can be uh, to the team and to the company. If uh, in the future I need to become or I would like to become uh, like uh, an automation manager, why not? Like really, but before doing that, you know, like you need to be on the same level or even a uh, level. On, on a higher level than people that you can be able to help, right? Because like, if you're gonna talk about some new automation framework that you would like to implement in the company, you need to be sure that you're gonna be able to talk about it, right? Not just like, okay, do your research and send me a report. That's not the way to do it. You should have an interaction with that person. And definitely, uh, do I have ambitions? Yes, I do. I'm not gonna lie about it. Um, yeah, hi, I'm back without power. Um, so if I cut out again, I apologize, or if the connection is flaky, I'm going off my hotspot, which is not great. Um, I have one last question. Um, can you tell me about a time when you had to influence a person or a team in order to improve quality? That's that's a really good question. And can I get like 10 seconds to think about it? Yeah, of course. Take your time. Uh, you know, like, uh, as I mentioned before, I was interviewing a lot of people that joined my team, right? 
And sometimes it's really challenging and it's really hard to make a decision if this is the right person for you, right? And for example, we've been hiring people that just had customer support experience, right? And we've been giving them a chance. Sometimes uh, since we're testing mobile applications, uh, we've been hiring people that have only web testing uh, experience, but they still, they know, they have the idea, right? They know how to write test cases and everything else, but it's gonna take them a while to uh, understand how mobile, what the difference between mobile platforms, the how to test the mobile application and everything else. And uh, yeah, we'd be hiring those people. And I was, uh, even though I was just like a senior automation, uh, senior uh, test engineer, I was uh, uh, onboarding body and I was helping a lot of people. And I remember one of the person, uh, she did only web testing and she was struggling uh, like for the first two months. And it's understandable that you need to give time to people and it's it's okay, like, right? They need to learn the product and the processes uh, in the company. And uh, yeah, I, like we've been seeing, uh, like talking about almost twice or three times a week. And I, I was trying to help her, providing her uh, as much inf information as I can, uh, even testing some of the jury tickets together, like to go through some, some of the challenges. And uh, at the end of the day, I was like, you know, at one moment of my life, I was thinking, since I was interviewing that candidate, did I do a right choice? And like, but I asked myself just once, and I, I, I told myself, like, I just need to give this person more time. At the end of the day, <laughs> she's one of the best QA right now on my team. And I'm really happy and I'm proud of her. And like, uh, sometimes and I, I understand that people just need a little bit more time. And like, probably because I, sometimes I have high standards for people, like uh, that I'm trying to see them as my level of knowledge, but that's wrong. And like, and I'm working on that. And it's a, it's a good thing, but I'm really happy with that person. And I'm really happy that I can help a lot of people in my QAT. Okay, great, thank you. Um, how much more time do we have? Uh, we have actually 10 more minutes to end, plus we need to give uh, feedback. Okay. Is there a choice that I can ask some questions? Yeah, let's uh, give you two questions. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you work remotely or you, you're going to the office every day, but <clears throat> despite the thing that maybe you work on a hybrid or a model or any, how to stay motivated on a daily basis? and how you're doing that. Just share, this is, this is just what I need right now to know and like compare what I do right, what I do wrong, well, how can I improve? And maybe you can help me with that. How to stay motivated on your current role. Speaking from my previous Oh, sorry, yeah. George, you wanna go first, go ahead. I, I'm asking, well, I, I wanted to clarify, are you asking how we, we stay motivated or how would you stay motivated? Both. No, no, how you are staying motivated. Right, um, yeah, okay. So speaking from my previous experience, especially like from this switch from um, since the pandemic started, we started working from home. And it, especially in the beginning, it was hard to stay motivated and like identify those working hours and um, like life hours, you just starting burning out. And that's what caused like motivation drop. Um, so my advice would be like define when, when is your working hours and when is your working space? And when you're like uh, stop working and start like living your life, doing some hobbies, etc. I think that's important so you don't uh, burn out and you have this focus while you're working. Also, you need a clear mission of why, why you're doing that. Not because of money, but also like your um, your own opinion. Why it's important? What like why I'm doing it? Why it's important? 
to have like a good quality of our application? Do you like do you um, like the company mission overall? Some people don't feel motivated in their company because they don't understand the value of the product they're making. Um, so that that would be a couple of my updates, and that's why I keep motivated myself. Uh, because I'm working in the health industry and I think what we do is really important in helping a lot of people. And I want to make sure we have really good quality on our products to serve those people. Uh, that's a really good answer, Maria. Um, I stay motivated purely by money. That's what wakes me up. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's the horrible answer. No. Um, I'm... I'm motivated by knowing I'm going to make a positive difference in the world. I currently work on a healthcare product that helps people to heal from injuries and be able to do things with their family, uh, the things that they love. So knowing that I get to make a positive impact um, directly on those people is super motivating. And the second part is the people I work with are amazing and they depend on me to do my job well so that they can do their job well. And I feel like that is a huge responsibility that I have towards those people. And um, uh, that that really helps me get up in the morning, work at 100% all the time that I'm working um, and just get better and better because I work with great people. Thank you very much. And the last, the last question, how to be on top of uh, industry, right? On whatever you do, like in the in the QA field, right? How to still be on top? Because right now it's really challenging. The technology is changing. Like you, you cannot use the same technologies that you used five years ago, right? How to be on top of that? Maria? Um, so a couple of things uh, what helps me at least. So um, I just came back from the QA conference, um, the Starbest. Uh, I spent a couple of days there. So uh, that is a great way to see what's going on in the market, uh, what's new, what people from your industry are talking about, ideas. Um, that's not mean, it doesn't mean that you need to implement all of those ideas, but it's good to be aware of those. So that's the first thing. Another thing is uh, the newsletter. Uh, or some like channels that you subscribe to. So you're getting some blogs uh, from smart people in your industry or like LinkedIn profile, you can follow some of the people who shared some posts uh, there. So just reading and YouTube. If you interested in, let's say in automation and you want to deep dive in this area, just take some courses, uh, watch some YouTube videos um, and just, just learn, consume information. Uh, for me, uh, I join this meetup and I follow everything that uh, Evgeny does. Um, but no, I, I follow a bunch of different things. Um, on Twitter, I follow some testing stuff. Um, I subscribe to testing newsletters and uh, I like to constantly know what's coming up. Um, yeah, so I read a lot. I also challenge my team so we we have very very challenging goals um very challenging goals um and they force us to innovate so it's it's crystal clear that we will fail miserably if we keep doing what we're doing and we can't just go from like one to two, we have to go from one to 12. <laughs> um, and so it, it, it forces us not to make small incremental changes, but to really think outside the box. Um, and I got to tell you, that really helps. It helps to generate a lot of really good ideas and look for things that are very different. Um, so it's not the status quo anymore. Um, and so honestly, just Googling stuff like automation frameworks, um, ideas, how to do something, talking to other people in the industry. And that's how I do it. Um, I wouldn't say I do it well, because I don't have a systematic approach of doing this. I think that would be better if, um, like the newsletter is a good idea. You know, I get articles that uh, in my inbox every week or two, 
um, but it's more of an ad hoc kind of thing. I'm suggesting to go with the feedback and uh, candidate number one, let's put your questions. I mean, I know that you may have more questions. Uh, can you put your questions in Q&A session? Or, I mean, a Q&A uh, tab, or we can actually go through maybe in the end. So we can cover like in EMA session, ask me anything. Uh, we will have like maybe 15 minutes for that as well. And all of you guys who is participating, please uh, don't hesitate to ask uh, questions. Put it in the Q&A and we'll try to answer all of them. Sounds good? Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, let's let's move with feedback, guys. What what would you suggest? Uh, what was when, what went well? What uh, you should improve? George, maybe you want to go? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm I'm gonna talk a lot, so I took a lot of notes. So uh, maybe it'd be easier if Maria went first. Maria, you are muted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'll be short. I didn't take a lot of notes. Um, I'm just uh, speak from my feelings. So first, a start with good. Um, I really like how I um, I felt your honesty uh, from what you're speaking. I really believed in everything you said. So that that's a really good uh, feeling I had during the interview. I also like that uh, how you go into details and sometimes go a little bit off the road of the questions, but in a good way. Uh, to provide me more details um, and like uh, more situations, etc., uh, from what I asked. Um, and um, so, from from what could could be improved um, is so from when we talked about um, mobile testing. Um, here, I wanted to hear a bit more details uh, on like how you actually test uh, your your mobile application uh, and what challenges you faced on and how it differentiate you from uh, web testing, uh, web testers, web application testers. Um, yeah, that's that's what I think, but overall it was really great interview. I really like that. And I think I would hire you or at least move you uh, to the next step of the interview process. Thank you very much for the feedback. Um, I wrote down a lot of notes. Uh, I really want to help you. Uh, so um, uh, first, I want to preface everything I want to say with a few things. Uh, I usually am very polite and professional during interviews, and I take a lot of notes. Um, and then I look over my notes and, and try to make a decision that way. Um, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, what I'll give you is what my brain is actually telling me, unfiltered, and it will not be very professional, but it will be honest. It's like I'm talking to a friend. So um, I think it'll be more beneficial for you. Uh, another preface is um, I'll also give you some tips on the resume. Um, as a hiring manager, literally, I don't spend more than two minutes looking at any resume. So um, it's very quick. And I'll give you some pointers about that. Um, Another preface is there's basically two kinds of hiring managers. Uh, the first kind, they look for people who can do the immediate job that they need. They look for certain skills and tools and programming languages. And they're like, I want someone to hit the ground running. The other kind of hiring manager is looking for someone who's just really great at testing um, and can learn and do anything. I'm the second type. So specifics matter less to me. It's more about what you've accomplished, how you've overcome certain things to achieve something, because I know you can apply that to the next thing that you're challenged with. So um, overall, uh, like Maria said, I really enjoyed talking with you. You're a very likable person. Your passion comes through and you're very knowledgeable. Um, a few of the good things, uh, you ask clarifying questions and you answered with authority and details that show you have expertise. That was great. You have a lot of knowledge. The things that uh, demonstrated that you have knowledge is you mentioned a lot of different things that are very specific to testing and, and showed that you're, you're not 
BSing, um, you know, you talk about memory leaks and how automation can help, how to use uh, browser stack and different tools, how you run automation locally and then in browser stack, how you run on real devices and then screen sizes and what's, uh, what's supported. Um, when tablets were brought up, you said not a lot of customers use tablets. That was great. It shows you know your stuff. You know what you're talking about. That's great. You're very passionate. Uh, you, you, a couple of times you said, I'm very passionate about something or I can talk forever about this. That's great. It made me smile. Um, you, others, you said other things like, I love this question because, or let's be honest here. Those things make you very, very likable. Um, like whatever you say after, like, let's be honest here. Um, kind of lets the, the interviewers guard down and they just accept whatever you're you're going to say with, with a grain of salt. So you have a little bit more leeway. So you can add a wow factor here. That's really great. Um, I like that you were good with people and supportive and positive. I think having that positive attitude on a team makes a huge difference. That's something I look for. Um, I would have just wanted to hear more details uh, about this. Um, I really like how you said, um, I want to get better with automation. And then you started talking about what you do well right now with automation. And it made me think, man, th this guy's awesome because he's already good with the automation that he does, but he wants to get even better. That's that's really great. Um, I really liked how you said, uh, can I take 10 seconds before answering a question? That is great. Uh, way better than diving into something or saying, um, and um, I totally respect that. I do that myself when I'm being interviewed, um, but I usually ask for 30 seconds instead, um, just to set the expectations. I take notes and then I answer. Very thoughtful, really, really good. Um, now, uh, some things you can improve. Um, you said you were answering a question and then you kind of ended with uh, what else and you paused and then you ended a uh, bad way to end End on a good positive high note. If you're not sure about the next thing you're going to say, don't say it, just stop. That's better than leaving something open-ended. You talked uh, too many about we and not enough about I. Uh, you said uh, a phrase about ton customers. You just have to upgrade your device. Don't say that. That was horrible. Um, I worked at Apple. I heard a VP say that once and I lost all respect for him. Um, never to tell customers, oh, you should just upgrade your device. It, it, it reflected very poorly. Um, yeah. Uh, your questions that you asked um, when you had a chance to ask questions, um, I'm sorry, man, they were really bad. Uh, don't ask those questions. Uh, you asked me how I stay motivated. I want to know how you stay motivated, right? Uh, like, wh why would you ask me that question? Like, it makes me very concerned that you need something very specific in your next job or from your manager for you to be able to stay motivated. I want to hear how you motivate yourself, regardless of the situation that you're in. There's ups and downs in the industry right now. It's kind of a down part of the industry, right? H how do you stay motivated when you know, companies are laying off people or we, you're not working on the project that you want. That's what I want to know as a hiring manager. Um, and then you asked how to stay on top of the test industry. Yeah, again, I want to know how you do that. Um, like maybe if you were asking, um, if, uh, if, if the team that you're going to be working on challenges you and you're going to work on something interesting and th then ask that question. Um, like phrase it in a different way. There's a lot of better questions to ask. Um, yeah, like if you're given the opportunity to ask questions, make, their, make sure they're very thoughtful um, and reflect well on you. They might not be the actual questions you want to ask. That's fine. You can ask those later once you get an offer, but this is your chance to impress. So like one good question is, what are your expectations in the first three and six months, for example, right? Um, or how can I exceed your expectations in the first three months, right? Like it shows that you want to impress, you want to work hard, you care about this job. There's better questions to ask. Things to improve. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll talk about your resume in a minute here. Um, but I, you're a great tester. You're passionate about quality. But I would have loved to see, I would have loved to hear more about your customer 
focus, right? Like you talked about different types of testing, um, finding bugs or, or testing a different way that found different bugs. Um, but I didn't hear much about the customer. The only reference was telling customers to upgrade their devices. And if you can link your passion for quality, which I, I believe there is, um, and how it makes an impact on customers, that would be great. Um, Amazon, one of their leadership principles, customer obsession, like obsessed with customers. Um, in my current company, uh, we we put calling we call it putting members first, but it's the same thing. Um, last week, I, I mean like twenty engineers, we worked for like three days on an issue that impacted forty five customers out of thousands. That's a lot of resources and time and money that went to fixing an issue for forty five customers. That, uh, that's customer obsession. Um, I want to hear something about that, why you care, how you fight for bugs, how you fight for customers. Um, let's see, uh, you talked about diving into the detail. Uh, when you're answering a question about how you, um, what you liked about QA and um, you said about diving into details and, and um, you know troubleshooting and that was great. Um, to make the answer a little better, start with the characteristic first and then describe it. So, or describe how you embody it. So start with, like, it helps me as an interviewer to formulate my notes um, when you formulated your thoughts better. So start with something like, um, I, I love the attention to detail. For example, diving deep into the bugs, troubleshooting issues, uh, getting more info, things like that. Um, so I guess overall, you're very likable, your passion and expertise of testing comes through more about the customer um, and more about the impact that you've made directly. So details, um, less we, more about I and what I've done. Uh, I hope this is helping. Uh, and finally, your resume. Um, I looked at your resume first and then we had this chat. Um, you gotta improve your resume, man. Um, it, Cause you are way better than your resume. Uh, and your resume is the first impression that gets you in the door. Um, honestly, your resume looks just like everyone else's resume. It's not impressive. Um, so yeah, uh, here's some notes about your resume. Um, it did not wow me. Uh, your summary, uh, useless. The only thing that caught my attention was the seven years plus. That was the only meaningful thing in there. I skimmed the rest. It was keywords. Then you got a list of skills. Honestly, I, I don't really care. Um, unless I'm the first type of hiring manager who just wants a robot who can just do certain things, then I'll look for keywords. And you don't want to work for that manager anyways. Um, your career won't improve. So um, that's fine. I get putting keywords in, in a resume. I get it. Figure out a different way to do it. Put it at the bottom. Uh, but I don't care. Uh, you you got to impress. Uh, and by the way, I did not look barely past the first page. Um, so you have to impress me the first 10 seconds when I look at your resume and it did not. And your title, looking for a quality assurance engineer position, so is everyone else. It's useless. Take it off. It's a waste of space on your resume. Uh, sorry if I'm being too honest, but this is what my brain is telling me when I'm spending the 60 seconds reviewing a resume. Um, so I, I, I hope this is really helpful. Um, yeah, your QE lead position, um, in, in general, what I look for in a resume is a demonstrable, measurable impact. Um, so the more clear you can be about how the work you've done made an impact and how it's measurable, the better. And this is a common thing I see in interview in resumes, very, very common. People just list kind of what they do, like their, their roles or responsibilities. Um, and it's like, I don't know if you're good at it or not, right? Like I, I test and find bugs. So does everyone else, right? Tell me what you do. That's great. So anyways, um, you said like, I lead testing efforts. What does that mean? How do you lead testing efforts? Like, are you the only tester on these features? And so by default, you're the lead or are there five other testers that look to you for guidance? Do you create test plans and strategies and people follow you? I don't know what it means. Describe. 
Um, the training other people, that was interesting, but I want to hear more. Again, impact, like what, what does that mean? Are you the onboarding person for every new tester? Do you find new ways of testing and then give talks, lunch and learns or whatever, tech, test talks to your teammates? I don't know. Implementing automation, not clear enough. I mean, sounds cool, but what does that mean? Do you hit a button and the script runs and you've implemented automation or do you implement frameworks from scratch and um yeah uh coordinating stuff with other people worthless i'm sorry man we all coordinate stuff what, what does that mean it, it, it's it's me i'm sorry it's, it's it's meaningless um and and i'm getting more frustrated because hearing you talk you're a great tester like you do all this stuff you're knowledgeable and passionate and stuff and your resume does not reflect that. And people won't hear about how awesome you are if your resume doesn't get you that first interview. Um, yeah, the SDEP, after the SDEP position, I really didn't care about the rest. I didn't read it. I'm not going to um, because I don't have time. Um, the education part, uh, you've got a, a bachelor's in computer science. That's awesome. From where? If it's a significant university, write it down, even if it's not very significant, write down from where, just the one liner that says BS in computer science is kind of BS, right? Um, and then those other courses, cool, give me more. Is there a certificate? Like how long was the course? Where was it from? If it's an online university, mention that. Like your education seems impressive, make it look impressive. Um, so your resume is just, it's boring, it's bland, and it it describes someone else. It's it's not you. Um, make your resume super impressive, because when you when I talk to you after I see an impressive resume, it needs to match, and it's what's going to get you in the door. Um, yeah, I told you I was going to be very honest, uh, because this is what I would say to a friend if I only had fifteen minutes to talk to him. Uh, do you have any questions for me? I know I talked a lot and said a lot of stuff. Uh, no, I'm really uh, happy that you're honest with me because not a lot of people would say that, uh, whatever you said right now. And I appreciate that. 